Dollar store, store stocks, Dollar Tree and Dollar General, getting whacked today after both reported quarterly results before the bell. Dollar General uh, down at the moment 1%, Dollar Tree down 15%. Joining us now to give a take on this and the retail sector as a whole is Vantage Way Capital Partner Avery Sheffield. Uh, Avery, thank you for joining us. Hello, my pleasure. Uh, let's talk through these uh, particular stocks first because you've uh, been involved in them in the past in yes. terms of uh, shorting them in the few years back. But what's your view on them now and, and, and where they're headed from here? Is this an overreaction in particular in the latter? Right, right. And so just to be clear, I actually worked on the Dollar General IPO back on uh, the uh, back in 2009. Um, I've always been very positively inclined towards that stock. Uh, and, you know, I think what we've really seen is the difference in execution, right? So Dollar General has been a consistent executor for many years. And the story of the Dollar um, Tree and Family Dollar merger was that Family Dollar was going to become Dollar General. And that that has just proven to be more difficult than anticipated. And that really came through in this quarter's results and hence the difference um, in the market's reaction to both. I would say Dollar General probably should be fine for here. I mean, it's traded, trained near a market multiple, so I don't know if you see a lot of multiple expansion, um, but should continue to benefit from the economy. And then Dollar Tree, it's really, if you can start to see those family dollar stores start to improve, I'd become more constructive. It's at 15 times earnings. It's nowhere as cheap as other retailers um, that have a lot of opportunity for um, significant operational improvement, but, you know, one to watch for sure. That's where I wanted to go. So we're just digesting all of these retail reports. Most of them were very strong, but there were a few notable losers, and it's interesting because it sounds like that's where you see the opportunity. Names like yes. Gap? Yes, Why? absolutely. So what's interesting about Gap is, you know, Gap is really Old Navy, right? It's just called Gap. And, and because of the, the name and um, the history of Gap and that the struggles well, of that if brand. If it were Old Navy, then it'd probably be doing a lot better. Well, I mean, you, you know, I mean, there's some people who've argued that they should really separate out the businesses and that's how you could really extract value because Old Navy um, is, you know, one of the, the best performing, largest retailers in the country um, that is still significantly underpricing their merchandise. I mean, you can go in there and you can outfit your child for items between three and eight dollars in like the cutest outfits you could find um, a lot of opportunity for um, for pricing power and what they're doing is they're taking the talent from from Old Navy um, and bringing it into Gap and they have a new CEO or, of the Gap brand um, and they're, they're really taking seriously I think a turnaround um, for the first time in a long time and if they do that there's enormous upside in just the earnings power of the Gap brand um, and there's still strong uh, potential in Old Navy, and um, and certainly the turnaround of Banana Republic is is underway. You can also outfit yourself in Gap for very good price. So. Incredibly good prices. Navy. I mean, but, they yes. do have some baby pajamas that are yes. super cute. The other um, store that you mentioned here is one to watch is Bed Bath and Beyond. What's yes. your view on that? So, I mean, Bed Bath and Beyond has incredible potential um, for earnings growth if if they execute properly. So, um, Babies R Us uh, is you know, and Toys R Us have just gone out of business. They own Bye Bye Baby, the largest baby superstore in the country. Target has said that the baby sector is one where they expect to drive their business. If they can drive their $70 billion of revenue through Toys R Us going under, if Bye Bye Baby is able to execute well, it should make um, it should have enormous upside for Bed Bath as well. But they well. haven't been able to do that. They haven't been able to do that. And so that's why it's a question of execution. And if I were a leader of this company, you know, if I were on the board of this company, I would be asking, like, why can't we take advantage of this? What do we need to put in place? Also, what's interesting with Bed Bath is they're still using their 20% off coupons on Line and in store. That was a uh, that was a promotional strategy to drive people to the stores. I think that they should be price matching online, and then they should be driving people to the stores with their coupons, where you can fill the whole basket and build your margin structure. So there's a lot of untapped opportunity from an executional standpoint. But as we've seen with Dollar General and Family Dollar, if you don't execute, you're not going to realize the margins. But it is not true that Amazon and Wayfair are going to kill the home furnishing space. If you look at the performance of Williams Sonoma, they've done extremely well at a much higher price point because they're executing well.